Nick drew first blood of the hunt. One great North American mallard. Probably just a direct hit, right on, right on the joint. Yeah, it's right from that side. Yeah, dude, it hit his wing too. <laughs> it is Saturday, December the 17th, 2022. And it's actually my first hunt here at the farm this year. Kind of still waiting on water to arrive. This is all that we have right now. But they're here. Uh, evidently there were quite a few birds using this water yesterday. And I guess for like the last probably five days. Guessing 40 to 100 ducks using this section of field. Taking advantage of all this food. And we are taking advantage of this cover. Laying out here in old school layout blinds. And all of these grasses. Very small decoy spread today. We were using Featherlight uh, blow up ducks because they move really, really gently. They move really easily. In the gentlest breeze, Nick's got the jerk string going there to add the ripples. We got some feeder butts over there. We were considering just adding that first dead mallard to the decoy spread too, just for a bit of realism. These late season birds, right where they want to be. I'm kind of panning past where Nick is hiding right now. All you can really see is his head until he ducks down even further right there. Yeah. Kind of feel like officially we're in the late season now. We're actually just talking about when we'd see our first ring neck duck. And they just got one. Nice Drake. It's the most numerous freshwater diver we see. Oh yeah, good eating one. For sure. Pretty bird. So far it has been a day of strikeouts and near misses. Nick's been doing pretty good though. Uh, me not so much, but I'm having a lot of fun. We've kind of switched over to the other side of this pond just to give it a go looking this way. They're coming in from all points of the clock. Uh, it is not dull by any means. Just from my perspective, laying out in this blind, looking at all the seeds of these sedge grasses overripe and just dangling from the plant, ready for the water to come up. There's not much of it this year yet, but as soon as it does, we still have a very good strong hand to play in the waterfowling game. could end up being a really good January for some field hunts.
So I heard you crawl out of your blind and go walking over there after those ducks landed. I'm walking over here, I can't hear and I'm walking. That was crazy, dude. She ended up finding this thing over there, like you saw. And um, she got back on it and chasing it back over that way. And I saw it dive right next to her, right? And I um, saw it swimming like towards me and I'm um, underwater and I tried to see where it went but I couldn't see where it popped up and I thought it went back over in the grass to the right of me but dude it stayed out in this clump of grass underwater and it had its head its bill just sticking out of the water dude to breathe and uh, I saw its head come up for air and it was just sitting like that so that's why his head looks like that <laughs> dude that I've never seen a duck do that his whole body was underwater dude hiding and I just see this duck head just come up, just bloop, just to like get some air, dude. He didn't go to the brush and he stayed right in that clump where I saw him dive. I walked right over it, dude. I was going over it like this. He was like right here. Like I walked right over it. I couldn't believe that. I didn't even see him down there. And then he, he was just chilling like that. I can't believe that. But yeah, that was cool jumping that, jumping that flock. I can't believe I got that close to him. I got super close. I didn't really, I thought they went down in there because I was trying to call them. They just landed short. And, uh, I was able to walk over there and get, get two out of it. That was cool. That was crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, if I wouldn't have went and got her, she wouldn't have found it. <clears throat> I saw it cross over twice. I saw it went over once. Yeah. And then when you guys were over there, I saw it go back over and you were chasing it. Uh -huh. I saw you put the gun up to shoot it, but you didn't yeah, the first was, time. Yeah, she was too close to it. And I had to let it go. <laughs> and then it dove again right there and it stayed put there. I couldn't believe that, dude. I, it was the funniest sight when I walked up to it and, and saw it, its head just coming up to the top. It's just its bill and air bubbles coming out of it, dude. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. And she was, she was far enough away, so. Whoop, boom! Yeah, that was cool. <clears throat> well, <laughs> turning out to be a pretty good day. Yeah, we we're getting a couple. Yeah, got a couple out of the ordeal. There we have it. Nick was able to scratch a few out. I didn't get anything today. Kind of immobile. I'm recovering from a back injury, but uh, I had a lot of fun laying out in the field and watching some spectacles of waterfowling today for sure. A lot of good laughs, a lot of good <laughs> sights, and we definitely have a good plan for tomorrow too. There's some spots still here at the farm that a lot of birds are going down in. We're hoping to capitalize on that in the morning. It's kind of funny we were talking today about when the ring night ducks were going to show up. No sooner do we finish our conversation, Nick got a ring neck duck. This one here has a particularly very well developed bill and coloration. It is Sunday, December the 18th. It is the second day for me hunting the Duck Sage Venture Farm. There's still a few well-educated greenheads and some sprig tails working around. Packed really light this morning. Got a late start. It's about nine o'clock. Going for the mid to late morning, early afternoon flight. Got a half dozen mallards and a pair of bull sprigs right there. All of them blow up feather light decoys. I'm not trying to work too hard today.
Well, that was pretty cool. A flock of ducks came in and landed out of nowhere. Uh, I didn't have time to turn the camera to capture them. I got two with one shot on the rise, and then got another one trying to fly away. Three mallards. Tides can turn really quickly on a duck hunt. Very quickly, you end up with three. The mighty North American mallard. I just looked up to my right, and they were cupped, coming right down, no calling. Caught me completely by surprise. Had enough time to really just turn the camera on, but I couldn't really turn it. And they landed, and then as I stood up, they got up. I got a, the drake and the hen with one shot, and then uh, another hen out over the pond. Uh, the temperature is definitely dropping, it's gotten windier, and uh, the afternoon could be completely different than the morning. Look at those feet. Very orange. Good looking duck. Perfect coloration. Nice curl tail. Look at that green head. So I just dropped a ringneck duck out there, first one of the season, while I was getting footage of that hen mallard over there in the timber. So I'm gonna go get it here. And just like that, all the dark clouds are gone. We have cold, clear, sunny skies. Let's stick it out for a few more hours here and see what happens. It'd be really pretty to shoot some mallards in these conditions like this. 
might luck out, make it happen. It's an incredible pintail. He was mixed in with those mallards. Picked him out. I'm right in the net. Came in mixed in with a bunch of mallards, or two separate flocks. I'm glad I held off. I waited for him to come back, and he was in there. And I saw him. Definitely a prime specimen. He is a dandy bull sprig. He's got a nice long pintail on him right there. Look at the collars and his wings. Really doesn't get much better than that as far as pins go. I mean, besides maybe having the tail be a little bit longer, but I love these back feathers right here. How they like sprawl out or long. One pellet through his neck. It's kind of cool. I got a pintail over those inflatable pintail decoys. And it was automatic reflexes when he came in with that group. I saw him and the gun barrel was pretty much on him. It's starting to get stormy and cloudy again. It does feel like it's going to snow. Well, not too bad for getting started late today. Uh, definitely have really, really numb fingers and hands right now. It actually feels pretty good. Uh, it's a feeling that I associate with duck hunting quite a bit. Cold body parts. Seems like a really good transition into the late season right now. You know, uh, the birds just are really smart and wily. Uh, the weather is definitely matching what it should be doing right now. And uh, it's around 2 o'clock. I got all the decoys picked up 
and I'm gonna get out of here, head up to the duck shack, make a fire, <laughs> warm my hands. Most of the action today uh, started around 11 o'clock, between 11 and about 1 p.m. Slow but steady action, quite a few high flyers, not nowhere near as many ducks as there should be in the area at this time of the year. I'm just hoping that they're waiting on the water levels to rise up a little bit more and uh, give them more places to go. weather has definitely turned. I've watched it change quite a bit during this hunt. Uh, at first, it's earlier today, it was coming out of the west, the wind, uh, and now it has completely changed direction. It's blowing out of the north, it's starting to sleet, it is starting to hail, and uh, I'm hoping overnight it starts to snow. So I'm going to trudge on and back up the hill to the duck shack. And uh, let the weather do what it's going to do. And that's what I'm ending the day with. One ring neck duck, one pintail, and three great northern mallards. So Holly went out and got that duck. A group of three came in, missed the first shot, doubled down on the second, dropped her. Holly went and retrieved her. When she brought it in, I couldn't believe my eyes. That's the first time I've gotten two bands in one season. And it is the first band I've ever obtained here at the property. Wednesday, December the 21st. It's officially the first day of winter. It's the darkest day of the year, around eight hours of daylight today, and uh, the winter solstice is here. So changing of the seasons for sure, and uh, it's already off to a pretty good day. I started out on one of the front ponds this morning, and I've just relocated Put out a little bit more decoys on the back slough. And I'm going to stick it out here for a bit today and see what happens. We have a north northeast wind, snow to dusting last night. Uh, there's a little bit of ice on everything. And I'd say it's probably in the upper 20s, 28 to 29 degrees. It's not going to warm up too much today either. It's going to be kind of blustery out of the direction. Arctic today. Holly, say bird. Here's a look at the setup on a very cold, chilly late December day. Got three widgeon decoys down there. The whole idea here is a very loose 
in light numbers because it's officially the late season. So I don't have a lot of decoys out today. Got a pair of mallards right there. That's a pair I really haven't touched all season. I've kind of kept it tucked away with others that are just nicer looking because the drakes are looking their best going into this time of the year. I also have over here got the feather lights tucked up there against the corner downwind of me and I don't have any ring neck ducks but I have a lot of bluebill decoys and so I put out a couple bluebill drakes to act like ring neck ducks it's the next best thing just to, because they're around a little bit more realism to the spread and of course downwind looking to the east over there is the more sheltered calmer water that the ducks should be wanting to land in. All right, I got bombed by a flock of widgeon and I got two out of it. Camera was out of batteries. I'm gonna send Holly to go get this bald pate. There we go, she's on it. It was just before one o'clock and uh, I've picked up the decoys and I am done for the day. It's an awesome waterfowling experience today. It was a great transition hunt between stages in the season. Um, I really really feel like uh, early season and the mid-season stretch has come to an end and with the beginning of winter comes the beginning of the true late season. The weather today definitely was very winter-like and it fit the calendar date for sure. Uh, even though it hasn't really felt that way, all of December has been very winter-like this year compared to years past. Definitely a lot colder, way more snow, way more frosts and ice. Felt really good the last uh, three hunts I've done out here at the Duck Sage Venture Farm to really just go lightweight. You know, very small decoy spread, very loosely placed decoy spread. Just kind of using the shadows and the wind direction to my favor. Just sticking it out and putting some hours in. And uh, I've been pulling some quality birds and just a lot of classic waterfowling situations and scenarios. I 
I definitely could have gotten my limit today. Uh, I'm still working out a lot of the kinks, I think, from before the season even started. And a lot of times I don't think I really get rid of the kinks at all. Sometimes I just get so excited to see just birds working the decoys, you know, shoot too early, shoot too late, under them, over them, behind them. Glad I could come out here and hunt with Holly. She had a lot of fun. She got some swim time, made some awesome retrieves. She did really good on uh, staying on command today and not following me like she usually does all over the place. And it was our first banded duck that we've ever gotten together. Uh, so just because of that, you know, just feel like it was a special day for sure. Bands don't happen that often. And when they do, you know, you, I always look at the special meaning behind, uh, like the karmic wheel or something behind it. It just allowed me to come in contact with that bird today. I'm probably not going to hunt the field now. I'm probably going through the holidays. I'm going to let it sit and rest uh, going into January. It is supposed to rain, and hopefully, we should get more water and more flooding to fill our farm up with more water. Uh, the late season is always a wild card. You never know what can happen, and anything can happen between this day and the end of January. So, I'm ready to play that wild card out of many hands that still remain out of the waterfowling deck placed before us this year. Here's a look at the birds obtained today. That last hen mallard, uh, I snuck up on it and jump shot it. And after I thought it was dead, I threw it in the water for Holly to get it. And it wasn't, it was very much alive and it swam into the bushes and we couldn't find it. And then uh, at the end of the hunt, when I went back over there to pick up the decoys, it was just sitting there in the grass looking at me. And I looked at it and it got up and tried running and I dove on top of it and grabbed it and wrung its neck for the sixth duck today. The banded duck was the second bird that came in Got a double out of a bombing flock of widgeon. That's actually one of the coolest bald pates I've gotten this season. You can look at look at how white its head is. That's one of the prettiest widgeon gotten here at the farm this season. Really gorgeous. Its wings, though, could be better. And then, of course, Drake Greenwing Teal it was the first duck of the morning. Really pretty bird. A lot more teal buzzing around today than there were in the last previous days over the weekend. And they usually say the teal come first in the way of the ducks, followed by the bigger ones. There is a lot of food on a single mallard duck. Lots of ways to prepare the bird. First thing first, is you gotta pick all the feathers off. And this one here is in pretty good condition, so I might just pick the whole thing so that Sarah can put it in the pot roast. Excuse me, not the pot roast, the pressure cooker. First thing you want to do is get the shoulders, get those wings in the armpits. If you get all this first, the rest of it is actually pretty easy. Broken wing, 
You don't spend too much time on a broken wing, just get it up to where the brake is. Okay. This is a really good bird. A lot of nice skin on it. I'll just cut it right there. Look at the armpit here really quick. Those long ones. Let's get around there. And then the rest of it should shed right off. Get the back first. I'm gonna take your thumb and roll it. Over the years, I think I've picked well over a thousand ducks. And uh, this motion is actually wearing down my thumb joint. It gets pretty achy at times. But look at that. Just kind of take your, rub it, get all the down, what you can off of it. And flip it over. Grab it by the neck. Do the same thing. It's the full circle of hunting. It's the time spent processing your game when you're done. It's time spent processing your day and your life. Sometimes I wonder if when we die, there's some greater spirit doing the same thing to us, kind of taking us apart, looking at what we're made of. Wow, this is a really good duck. Now the legs, just going to take your thumb and rub right up around the joint. Get all those little down feathers off. This part is really painful. You invest in an electric plucker. Nice. Get the other leg. Get those feathers off right there. Right there by the joint. Hey, okay, right there. And just take your thumb and just get the rest of these little deposits uh, down feathers off. For the finishing touch, I'll kiss it with a flame from my camp stove. This wing here I'll pluck out. Nope. First knuckle. I'll cut it off right there at that knuckle. Same thing on the back. And I get those wings. Are kind of just the most finesse. That one's ready. One last brush over. There we go. That one's ready. All right, so here I have that picked mallard. I've removed the wings and the one leg. I'm going to keep the banded one on until it goes into the kitchen. And then all I got to do now is just a little bit of flame to burn off the rest of those down feathers. You know, I just kind of run it right over the top, get the legs. Years and years and years of smelling like burnt down feathers. There's other ways to do this with wax. I've never tried it. It's just quicker, I think, this way. It doesn't do that bad of a job. If you burn yourself, no biggie. I get around the neck here. I get all right. There we go. That mallard is ready for dressing, and then ultimately cook pot. Okay, for tonight's dinner, we are having mallard and pintail flanks barbecued. I've kind of painted them with some olive oil, black pepper, Johnny seasoning, about five minutes skin side down, and then I'll flip them. And I'll keep her doing that 
until I get the right consistency uh, in the meat that I'm looking for. Alright, it's time to flip these. Looking really good. Waterfowl actually have really good meat in their legs and thighs. For the most part it is dark meat. The key is finding that right balance because it can be a little on the rare side and bloody. Just making sure that it's done but not overdone. Perfect. Alright, this should be 10 minutes on either side, flipping them every five. So I'm going to take these in and see how they look. They smell really good. Let's see how well these are done here. I cut into this breast, and that actually looks pretty good. There's like no obvious like major pink. I think it's still pretty tender. Wow.